Here's the finished product of what we'll be creating in this lesson. We populate this list component using mp3 files on our server and this XML configuration file. And we designed the way the list component looks in part one. Now in part three, we're going to make this thing actually play. When you click on things, it's going to be playing song one by default. When you click on things, it'll change the song and start playing that song. And that's what we'll take care of in part three. But in part two, we just take care of loading it up and getting it ready. And in this part of the lesson, we're going to go over, we're going to take a good look at the external XML configuration file, which is right here. I'm going to show you very nice in one moment. We're going to bring that, parse that into Flash through code. It's very simple. I'm going to show you the code. You can use my code. I'm not going to sue you. Don't worry about it. If humankind, we know shared code and share ideas, we go nowhere, correct? Okay, here's how I'm set up. I have a folder here. The main folder is called AS3 MP3 XML Playlist Player. Inside of it, there's part one folder, which is the file that we created in part one of the series. And now I'm going to take, which is open right here in this window, I'm going to file save as part two. In that here, we'll call this make a new folder, call it part two. And inside, let's call this one part two, save. Very nice. Now let's go to that folder. There's part one, part two. Here are the MP3 files. I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in a folder called MP3 underscore files. Well, that's how you want to have your setup in a folder called MP3 files or whatever you want to have the folder named as. And then part two, we're just going to have we have our application where we're building it, we're going to need those mp3s to be in there, so let's go ahead and do that. Drag them in there, put your mp3s into your project folder, and also we're going to create a new XML file. So you can start with the notepad file, just make sure make sure it has a .xml extension, or just open Dreamweaver like I did, and create an XML file from Dreamweaver. And then inside of that folder, you're going to put that XML file, whether it's blank or not at this point doesn't matter, just put it in there. Did I put that in part one? No. Okay, part two has everything we need in it now. The source file for the Flash MP3 player, the MP3 playlist, which is the XML file that controls the player, and then all the MP3s that we want to play sitting in that folder. Okie dokie. Now, Let's take a good look here at the XML file. Let's open it in Notepad and in Dreamweaver. So maybe somebody that downloads the application from you doesn't have Dreamweaver. They might open it in Notepad here like this. And you can have an instruction file, a readme text file, in the folder that shows them and explains to them how to configure this thing. It's very simple. All they have to do is in between each song tag, put the song title and the song artist in between those tags. So each node has a name, song title, and song artist. And then those are wrapped in the song tag. And then that's all wrapped in XML. So what XML does is it takes each one of these songs. You don't even have to have a number. It says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll do that back in Flash. So you can have your whoever's configuring the file or if you're configuring the file just put as many of these as you want you can see I have all eight that I need and you can have 300 in here if you want or have PHP render out a magic XML file which I do that a lot some other programmers use that method a lot where they'll render out a dynamic PHP XML file that feeds the flash player and that opens the door of possibilities to what you can do a whole lot because PHP could do things like read a whole folder say full of mp3s dynamically you don't have to assign anything in the XML file it'll do it all automatically and I might go into tutorials like that later on down the line but that's a little more advanced but this is a, a really good start so they would manipulate what's inside of the song tags and each one of these gets sent into flash as its own little entity 
and through the XML rendering loop inside of Flash we can access each one's song title and song artist and give it a number one two three four five six seven eight pretty cool and in Dreamweaver here if they open in Dreamweaver they have a lot more of a uh, a code coloring syntax coloring view which makes editing everything a lot easier now look at the file names the song title my space fat space laces so what that is the mp3 files names you see uh, my fat laces it has to be the person configuring the file has to know that it has to have the same name as the file that's sitting in the folder within these XML nodes see taste of blood summer homie don't play that that's all names that are already inside the folder exactly as they are written in the XML and then they can just type in whatever artist it is down there and that's pretty much the gist of it you want five more you just take one two three four five copy put them down here at the bottom put new ones in it's very easy and the flash file will do everything automatically you don't have to configure anything in the flash file the XML drives the whole thing so here we are we're looking at the main scene scene one inside of our timeline here inside of our file and there's my whole player clip let's double click inside of it and here's where our, we're building our whole player so all we have so far is the list component sitting there this funky little loop that's adding the items to it just for example's sake so now we're going to remove that loop so we just have our formatting and then the list set renderer style right there and let's go ahead and put in some dash marks here to separate what we're doing here so I'm gonna put in some variables here we're gonna initialize a few variables so what I did was I just popped in lines 10 through 50 so I popped in 40 lines so you don't have to really take the time to sit here and watch me code I'm just gonna explain it and this is just the populating the uh, the playlist this is not really going to be the full application this is just going to get the playlist populated and ready to go to where the application can function with the real songs playing in it what we do is initialize some variables one is track to play and that's a string next one is pause position and that's a number set to zero by default next one is a song URL and that's a URL request object and then we have another number which is index I for the loop in the XML here because we're going to do it a similar way that we we're going to use a for loop but we're going to use uh, an XML driven for loop use that external XML file to drive this for loop so the next thing we do after we initialize a few variables these are mainly going to be for the song playing actually these three are going to be for the player when we program it this one is really going to be for loading this XML and getting the song numbered the songs numbered one through eight or one through however many you have for the next bunch of code here we have lines 18 through 22 and these lines I'm not going to explain everything about XML because I have XML basic tutorials where I really go in depth at develop PHP you can get at those but basically these five lines here they initialize the XML, place the XML file name, initialize the URL request, and put the URL request into a new URL loader, and add the event listener on my loader, listening for when the XML loading is complete. So when that XML file loaded is complete, we're listening for that here. See? And when it is complete, we run this function, which is sitting right here, called function XML loaded. And everything inside of that function is what executes when that file is fully read and ready to be parsed okay so right here in our view panel we can see everything that happens inside of that XML loaded function first thing we do is place the XML data into the XML object very simple next thing we do is access song 1 in the XML file to start the player with we have to have a default song we want to start with you want to start with song 2 you just make this turn that from a 0 to a 1 and it'll grab song 2 all array indexes have a uh, default counter, starting counter of zero. So that's why it says zero there to grab song one. If you want to grab song three, you put a two. Song four, you put a three. And uh, we claim a couple of variables 
from the XML file per song here you can see how we access those those nodes of the first song and we put those into variable names here in their string type variables we can use that right here where we're looking for the URL request of the first song to play so the first song to play the player knows the song URL the first one is going to be mp3 file folder first song whatever it's named this is going to be sent in dynamically here dot mp3 and that's how it goes and then status text field we have to put on stage so let's grab that name of that control C and let's put a status text field let's just put it right there let's make it look the way we want make it maybe uh, black and make it dynamic and put that instance name right there status underscore underscore txt single line not bold then you can size it to be any size that you need let's just get it nice and big on there for now okay now we have that so our script won't throw an error because if you didn't put that on stage you tried to run this script action script would tell you hey, I can't find that object you're trying to load information into so what we're loading in, in, uh, into that text field is the number one because we know for sure that's going to be song one that we're going to start playing and the first song name and the artist and that's how it works and here we run the for each loop to iterate through all of the song items listed in the external XML file which you can see list.addItem boom that's where we're adding them all in they all get pushed into the list right here inside of this for each loop right there okay so let's explain what happens really quickly inside of this XML loop this for each loop and you can see what we do is we make a variable of song the name of the variable is song and it's an XML from inside of our my XML object here and we access the song node the parent nodes of each song so with doing that you can see I did the same thing here I access the parent node dot song title and dot song artist to get the child nodes information so right here in the for each loop it's going to run through each of the parent nodes in the XML file and inside you can access the children see song dot song title to string we make a string variable out of each object in the XML file we can create a string variable for a song title and song artist from that and that's what we're doing there oh I didn't explain the I++ I++ is going to be iterating each time this loop runs I++ makes this I variable that we created here increment each time so it's going to have and I'll explain what we're using it for right here in the list add items in a second but that increments each time so it starts at one and it goes all the way up to however many items you have in your loop that way you don't have to number anything in the XML file okay so the last line inside of the loop is where we put all of the items into the actual list component on stage and we can set little parameters for the label what we want the cell to say in the list so this one's going to say the label is going to say I which is the song number dot so it'll be one dot two dot three dot song title and then song artist and then we have a hyphen there in between song title and song artist now the song string this is not going to display in the cell but it's something a piece of these are two song string and artist and song number here those three pieces of information I added extra to the the add item function and those will be sent and carried by each cell within the list each cell within the list when clicked will have different information about these things kind of hidden within it when clicked and you can access that information as a programmer but all that'll show in the cell is this label everything right here is going to show in the cell 
After that, all this other information is going to be kind of hidden, but we can use as programmers. And the last little bit of code happening here is outside of the for each loop, but still within the XML loaded function here, is we create a new variable, my array, and that array has values of 0 and 0. There's two items in the array. The first one has a value of 0, and the second one has a value of 0. I claim that array to select indices, select the indices of the list component, and we add my array to it. And what this does, let me put in a comment here. This highlights since song one is going to be playing by default in our player we have to highlight song one by default we don't want to just sit in there dark like the rest of them people wouldn't have a good indication of what was playing at that moment in the list so you want to highlight song one by default other ones will get highlighted when the person clicks on them but you have to make sure you want to get the first one highlighted by default so these two lines of code do that now right here I'm going to comment this out because we're not going to have be at that point yet. Now that completes all the code we're going to be looking at in part two here. Now all we have to do is make sure our XML has the the correct name. MP3 underscore playlist XML. Let's make sure that's right. MP3 underscore playlist. Yes. And we can run this thing in a second here and test it out. And then uh, what else is in there? MP3 files is the folder name. So everything is correct. So it should run when we press control enter and populate that list but it's not going to play the songs just yet look at that isn't that beautiful so what happened is it highlighted song one you see hi song one is highlighted right now if I click on song three that one's highlighted but what we did was highlight song one by default all the songs are in a list and they're all numbered it's beautiful when you click each one we're gonna make it change what's in the status field and that's going to be set up on top of the player just to indicate to people exactly what's playing you really don't even need that we'll just use that for testing maybe they'll know what's playing by what's highlighted here maybe we'll make the highlight blue who knows but this is the finished product of what you'll have after applying this code to what we started in part one and that is really the beginning of driving the whole application is getting that list populated with the actual mp3s that are on server in a folder and it's all xml driven and what we'll do in part three which i'm going to probably do in a little while here is get these to play when clicked well actually we're going to have start uh... song one start up by default i think part three might finish the application maybe we'll have four parts part three we'll get this thing playing and clicking and changing and everything and in part four, we'll, we'll create better logic for the application.